Hey, what's going on guys? Josh Donnelly here with yet another pro theme WordPress tutorial. In today's video, we are actually going to look at something that is a little bit more advanced in terms of capability, um, but is really simple to execute. So I will try to break it down as simply as possible and I'm happy to answer questions in the comments as well. What we're going to do in today's video is actually use an external form like type form to pass data into a query string on our site and build a page with dynamic content using the data that's in that query string. So that probably sounded like gibberish to a lot of you, but let me show you how it's done. So the first thing we're going to do is build out a couple of sections. Now, this is just a basic page. We're going to call this our personalized page. So that's what I've done here. And on this page, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to build a very simple form. Um, and so one of the things we'll do is maybe just ask uh, what their favorite color is. And so if their favorite color is green, we want to show them green. And then we're going to duplicate this here. And if their favorite color is pink, we'll show them pink. Then what we're going to do is uh, add in maybe just a little bit of personalization. So let's add in a headline and, you know, let's give this a little bit of styling just so we can all see it here. And then in this, uh, I want this to be personalized. So I want this to say something like, uh, you know, the person's name, maybe. So um, I don't know, name we love pink too right something like that so what we're going to do is dive into our dynamic content so let's take a look at how we do that so we're going to come over to our edit text field here and open that up and where we have name we're actually just going to delete that and we're going to come down here to our dynamic content button and then what we're going to do is actually search for parameter now you could scroll through but searching is a nice quick way to do it and here we have our parameter now when we're building our form, we want to keep these things in mind and you can figure out what order you want to do this in. Obviously, I've planned this out a little bit, so I kind of know um, what keys I want to use here. But a key is basically whatever is going to show up in your query string. And we'll talk about what that looks like. This helps identify what that item is. So maybe my key here is going to be um, first name, all one word. OK. And we'll pop that in here. And so now it's just broken, right? Well, we don't want that, especially if for whatever reason, let's say the form didn't pass the data in that we wanted for their first name. We don't want it to look broken. So what we're actually going to do is also add a fallback. And so what that looks like is pull up our parameters here. And obviously we want first name and then our fallback, maybe it would just say hello. So if it doesn't have a first name, it'll just say, hello, we love pink too. But if it does have a first name, it would say, Bill, we love pink too. So we'll go ahead and pop that in there and we're going to just get rid of. So what I'm doing here is just deleting that first one I had in there as an example without the fallback. And there we have it. So right now it's just displaying the fallback, right? And we will go ahead and duplicate this for our green section. And here we could even pass through these values for the color, but I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So right now, our first piece of dynamic content is the name with the fallback hello. And now the second piece is going to be setting some conditional logic here. So what we're now going to do is click on our first section, which is our pink section. And we're going to come down to customize here. We're going to click on customize and we're going to come up to our conditions. And this is where we get to set some conditional logic. So on my conditions, I'm going to add a new condition group. And instead of post type is something, I'm actually going to click on string under expression. And in that string, I'm going to search for the same thing parameter. And in this case, I want my parameter to be color. OK, and then I will say if color is pink. And you'll notice I'm using a capital P. I'll show you why in a second, but um, it is case sensitive. So if color is pink, we're going to show this. Um, I'm actually going to also come up here while I'm building and under element conditions, I'm going to click ignore so we can actually see my pink section here. So this is ignoring any of these conditions we're putting in there. And then we'll do the same thing here. We'll click on customize. We'll click on conditions. We'll add a condition group. We'll say string and we will search for parameter. And then here we'll say color is green. OK, so now when the query string says that color is pink, 
show this section. When the query string says that the color is green, show this section. But now, what does all this mean? What does all this look like? And what is a query string? Uh, well, let's go ahead and save this. And now let's build out our form. And then we'll talk about what that query string is and how it works. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm actually using type form here. You could use anything that allows you to put a redirect in place and sort of build a query string into that redirect. So what we're going to do is just add two questions here, but obviously you could add more. The first question is going to be, what is your name? And we will make this not a multiple choice, but a short text. Okay, so we'll get the first name. And then we're going to say, uh, multiple choice, what is your favorite color? Okay, and so obviously I'm building these based on my page. So there's a little bit of planning that needs to be done here, but I'm going to say pink or green. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to come into this little gear here. Now, this isn't really a type form tutorial, so I'm going to move fast here, but I do want you guys to see how this is done. So um, I will still break it down for you. So we're going to click on the little gear here in type form, and I'm going to come down to our um, redirect upon completion, and I'm going to toggle this on. So the first thing we're going to do is pop in the URL that we want to send them to in our redirect upon completion but it doesn't end there. Now we want to build the query string at the end of the URL. So we're going to add a after that personalized page that we want to send them back to, we're going to say forward slash question mark. And this part's important, right? So we add in that question mark. Now we add our first key. So our first key was first name. So we'll go first name. And we did that all one word as our key equals. And now we want to put in a dynamic field, basically whatever their response was to that first question. So in type form, we hit the at key and we select that first question that we want to place in there. Now, we also want to add color in. So we use the ampersand and we say and color, which is our key. And these were keys that we just got to arbitrarily create. We created them when we were building the page. So that's how I know to recall them here while I'm building the form. So I'm going to say and color equals I'm going to hit my at key again here and I'm going to choose what is your favorite color. So once we've got our information in there for the query string first name equals and our first questions response and color equals our second questions response. What we are going to do is publish this form. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our quiz. So let's go ahead and type in our first name here. Uh, Susan and then our favorite color is pink. When we're done, it redirected us to our page. It knows our first name and it showed us pink. Now, how is it doing this and how is this working? Well, let me actually show you. So I'm going to actually shrink down the window here and show you how that query string was built. So here's the URL that we placed into our type form forward slash personalized question mark first name equals Susan. So it passed in my first response and color equals pink. So if I had come in here and I said, well, actually my first name is Katie and color is green and I hit enter, you'll notice that the query string now got to dictate the conditional logic on the page and now it changes my first name to Katie, we love green too, and it changes the background color to the green section we had. Now, I know at the beginning of this video, this probably sounds super complicated dealing with query strings and form data and passing the form data into the query string to customize the page, but it's actually pretty straightforward. All we did was add in some text elements with dynamic content in them. Make sure you use fallbacks where it makes sense. Duplicated some sections here, or created some sections based on whatever our form was going to customize. That's all obviously based on your needs. And then we customized the conditional logic on each of the relevant elements or sections. In this case, it was the sections. And that conditional logic on the sections is what helps dictate what happens with those URL parameters. We set keys. Again, those were arbitrarily created. We just needed to make sure that we had a plan for them. And then we mapped everything together in our case in type form. Uh, so that we could pass the data back via the query string. So hopefully you guys are finding these tips and tricks helpful. This was one that I actually recently used in a real world client build. If you guys do find these videos useful, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little bell and I will see you guys in the next video.